How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. This is topic 19, Higher Level Redox, volume number 6, What Are Faraday's Laws? Let's go. Alright, volume 6, What Are Faraday's Laws? We look at how we can calculate the amounts of products, we look at how do we know if something's spontaneous, and then we look at some factors that change the amount of products produced. So the IB understandings and applications focus on Gibbs free energy, which has popped up from topic five and whether or not something is spontaneous or not based on its delta G and E naught. And then we look at how we can calculate the amount of products formed during electrolysis. So if we need to determine the spontaneity of a reaction, we can use the E naught values to determine if something is spontaneous. If the E0 cell is positive, that is a spontaneous reaction. If the E0 cell is negative, that is a non-spontaneous reaction. Remember, E0 is the cathode minus the anode. So here's an example. If we're asked to, to use E0 values to determine whether the reaction is spontaneous or not, we need to look at the reaction and identify what's undergoing reduction and what's undergoing oxidation. So here lead is undergoing reduction and iodide is undergoing oxidation. So that means that the reduction reaction is at the cathode, that's the lead, and the, ox the oxidation reaction, the anode. Looking at the E naughts from the electrochemical series, we can work out that we would have negative 0.13, take away 0.54, which would give us negative 0.67. A negative value represents a non-spontaneous reaction. If we wanted to be able to do that reaction, we would need to set up an electrolytic cell. It's a non-spontaneous process. So we can link the Gibbs free energy and the E0 values via a simple equation. So remember that Gibbs free energy is the free energy of a reaction and that pops up in higher level topic 15. Make sure you check out the videos if you haven't done so already. I'll drop a link in the description below. Now these two are related directly through the formula or the equation delta G naught equals the negative N times F times E naught where N is the number of moles of electrons transferred in the reaction. So for example if we had iron 2 plus and that was undergoing oxidation or reduction we can see that the number of electrons being transferred would be 2 so our N would equal 2. F, Faraday's constant, is equal to 96,500, which is the charge on one mole of electrons. And that can be found in the data book on page two. Now the negative sign in this equation indicates that the E naught and the delta G, well, they have opposite values. So if we have a positive E naught and a negative delta G, that will be a spontaneous reaction. If we have a negative E naught value, we'll have a positive delta G, and that would be a non-spontaneous reaction. The direct relationship between E naught and delta G indicates the more positive the E naught value, the more energetically favorable the reaction. So here's an example where we need to calculate the delta G using standard electrode potentials. So calculate the standard free energy change for the following reaction. That's asking us to calculate the delta G naught. So we need to first identify what's undergoing oxidation and what's undergoing reduction in the reaction. We can see here that silver is being turned into silver ions, so that's undergoing oxidation at the anode, where calcium is going from calcium 2 plus to calcium solid, so it's undergoing reduction at the cathode. Our two half equations, well, we have it's two silver ions, two silvers turning into two silver ions, and it will be losing two electrons. The calcium, calcium ions turning into calcium solid will be gaining two electrons. So our number of moles of electrons being transferred will be two in this case. The other thing that we need to work out the Gibbs free energy is the E naught cell. So delta G is equal to negative N times Faraday's constant times the E naught. And now I need to work out the E naught and I can do E naught equals cathode minus anode. I know which one's going to occur at the cathode. I know which one's going to occur at the anode. So I can look at the electrochemical series and then substitute in the values. For this reaction, we get a very big negative E naught, negative 3.67. 
So to calculate the Gibbs free energy, we have our number of moles of electrons, two times Faraday's constant, times by our E naught cell. And this is going to give us quite a large positive number. So our delta G is 708,310, which is measured in joules. So in kilojoules, our delta G would be 7.08 kilojoules. Okay, what does this mean? They'll ask us to interpret these two values. So we have a negative E naught value and a positive delta G value. So this reaction would be non-spontaneous. The very large E naught cell and the very big delta G means that it is very energetically unfavored. This reaction does not want to go ahead under normal conditions. To get it to go ahead, we would have to do some electrolysis. And even then, Perhaps if water's in the way, we might not be able to do that. We also need to be, to, to be able to determine the amounts of products formed during electrolysis. And the way we do that is by linking a few formulas. We calculate what is called the charge, which is measured in coulombs, by looking at how much current in amps is passed through a solution and the amount of time in seconds that it's passed through for. So we have the formula Q equals IT, charge equals current times time. And then knowing that one Faraday is equal to 96,500 coulombs per mole or the charge on one mole of electrons, we can calculate the number of moles of electrons being transferred in a reaction. So the steps are generally the same for this type of question. We use Q equals IT, then we use that value to find the number of moles of electrons. We use the ratio between the number of moles of electrons and the product, and then we can find the mass. So for example, calculate the mass of iron deposited at the cathode when a solution of iron 2 nitrate undergoes electrolysis for one hour, 20 minutes, using a current of 0.75. So the first thing we need to do is work out the charge, how much charge has passed through this circuit. So we've got our current, 0.75, multiplied by our time, which in this case would be 80 minutes times 60 to get it into seconds, which gives us our charge in coulombs. Then we need to work out the number of moles of electrons by doing the charge divided by Faraday's constant. Remember, Faraday's constant can be found in the data book. That allows us to calculate the number of moles of electrons that passed through this electrolytic cell. Now we need to look at the equation. And in this case, we looked had Fe2+. Plus. So we can see that Fe2+, plus, plus two electrons will form Fe solid. So we need to use our ratio between our electrons and our unknown, which is Fe. So the thing that we want, one over the thing that we've got, two. So it's a half. The number of moles of, of iron is a half times the number of moles of electrons. So we can work out the number of moles of iron. After we've worked out the number of moles of iron, we can now simply work out the mass by doing the mass of iron equals mole times mole mass. Generally, for these type of questions, this process is the same. Calculate the charge, calculate the number of moles, calculate the number of moles of your product, and then determine the mass. So here, to two significant figures, our mass would be 1.0 grams. In the second example, a solution of copper 2 sulfate is electrolyzed for 30 minutes using a current of 0.5 amps. Calculate the mass of copper deposited and then B, the volume at STP of oxygen gas. So that one's a little bit different. Part A, very similar to the last example. So we follow the same, the same steps. Work out the charge by doing Q equals IT, remembering to change T into seconds. Working out the charge, we can then work out the number of moles of electrons. N of electrons equals Q over F, F being Faraday's constant. So we can work out our number of moles of electrons. To determine the number of moles of copper deposited, then we need to look at the equation. We were told that it was copper 2 plus, so we need to write the equation for copper 2 plus turning into copper solid. So here we will have copper two plus plus two electrons turning into copper solid. So we can use the ratio between copper and the number of moles of electrons to determine the number of moles of copper deposited. So that will be a half. 
copper is half as much as the number of moles of electrons. So we can work out the number of moles. Once we've got the number of moles, then we can work out the mass by multiplying the number of moles by the molar mass. For B, B is a little bit trickier. Work out or calculate the volume at STP of oxygen gas evolved at the anode. So we need to start in the same way by writing the equation for water breaking down into oxygen gas and hydrogen ions. Now again, we want to use the ratio between the electrons and the oxygen gas. Now we've got a half oxygen to two electrons, so that's actually a quarter. We have a quarter amount of oxygen as we have as electrons. So a quarter times the number of moles of electrons gives us the number of moles of oxygen gas. And now they've asked us to calculate the volume at STP. Now STP means I've got to use the molar volume. So to calculate the volume, I use the number of moles times by the molar volume, which at STP is 22.7 decimeters cubed per mole, which gives me 0.0529 decimeters cubed. They might ask me to work that out in centimeters cubed, so remember to multiply it by a thousand. Okay, finally, what are some of the factors that, if, that affect the amount of product formed during electrolysis? Okay, the time the current is passed through the solution will affect how much product we form. Q equals IT, if I increase the the time, I would simply increase the charge. More charge means more moles of electrons, which means more moles of product. If I increase the electric current of the circuit, again, Q equals IT, so if my current goes up, then my charge will go up. Increasing the charge increases the amount of product. The charge on the metal iron also has an effect. If we have something with a charge of positive, two positive and three positive, then it takes three times as many electrons to make the same amount in mole that it does of something that is singly charged. So a singly charged ion will have a lot more moles produced compared to something that has a three plus charge. You need to be a little bit careful here. That only works for moles when we're working out how many moles of metal are formed. But if they ask you for mass, you've also got to take into account the molar mass of those metals. Because some of the molar masses change a lot. Aluminium compared to silver, there's a vast difference there. So make sure you be, you're careful with the words that they use in the question. Okay, volume six, some top tips. Make sure you know the process. And really there's basically two types of questions. Either find the amount or calculate the Gibbs free energy. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, Drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.